So I think within large caps, it is a versus small caps, it is a transition back to a trend that was in place that typically happens towards the end of any economic cycle. And so I do still think we have time left in the cycle, which to me, the Morgan Stanley report may be a correction, but it's not a bear market. Um, and that's more important for the average investor. But, but I do think you had kind of some trends interrupted in the first quarter where small caps outperformed largely based upon shorter term thematic issues, such as the trade potential war. Um, I think as that shifts, and you've seen a pullback in the tariff talk over the past few weeks, um, as that shifts back towards the end of a more normal cycle, I do think large caps will reassert their outperformance versus small caps uh, and would look for that in the coming quarters. And Jimmy, we've been all pondering whether the fang trade is over, at least for now, as we get ready for Apple's report this afternoon. What do you think? I don't think it's over yet. Um, I think it's smart. Last time we talked on this show to take profits uh, from high flying names that have made 50, 100 percent returns in the last 12 to 18 months. It's just smart. So I think what's going on right now is just normal rebalancing to sectors that have been beaten up. And, and I think what we'll see is potentially as as the trade war talk, I think, will resolve itself. As I know the president wants uh, it to be in a good spot before we get midterm elections, I think that's going to help the market go even higher. What about the FANG stock specifically, though? Would you see them as having some value here, especially when you see some of the big selling that we've seen, some of them going into correction territory? Would you buy in there, Jimmy? I think you need to be selective. I also think it's very important to be active now and be a stock selector versus just buying the indexes and buying all the names. So I think you have to be selective. And yes, I think there's some value opportunities in some of these names. Which ones you'd select or is that just not something Yeah, I can't really give you any specific picks, but but I I do see some value right now, actually, in some of the moves that we've had in the recent week. So, Brent, you you heard um, Jamie Dimon say that his concerns are trade if it becomes something more than a skirmish. Uh, But clearly he seemed more concerned about policy errors uh, that might be monetary policy errors than anything else. What is the is the the biggest brick in the wall of worry for you? Well, I, I think it is that it's it's that inflation rises uh, faster than what the market expects, and it causes the Fed to um, go back on their promises of, of staying uh, longer and- for you know accommodated for longer. But but I don't think that's going to occur. I mean, I, I think from a societal standpoint, we've shifted. If you think about the 1980s, post 1980s, the enemy was inflation and the Fed's job was to fight the enemy and keep it at bay at all cost. And they were willing to sacrifice some economic gains for that in the short term because they thought it led to longer term price stability. I think societally we shifted. Mm -hmm. Now the enemy is no longer inflation. It's deflation. It's lack of economic growth. It's income inequality. And I think the enemy is no longer inflation, but those things. And so I do think the Fed will continue to act just as they say they will. They will let the economy run hotter. And I think you're seeing that with other central banks. I mean, the Bank of Japan took something away last night, but they added something. And so when the central banks have walked the economy um, in the markets this far away from what is normal, they're not going to let it all go back at once. And if there's anything we've learned over the past few years, they're actually doing a pretty good job of doing that. Now, longer term, that may set up for higher inflation, which I don't think anybody else is really calling for. But I think the Fed's tolerance right now is pretty high. And the inflation numbers that came in the U.S. today while I, I, I kind of disregard people who say there is no inflation because I'm not for sure how 1.9 and 2.2 is zero. Right. Um, but I, I think there's, the Fed has room to, to kind of react how they want to, and they're going to react very easily.